Saxon Advanced Mathematics, Lesson 74. Oh my gosh, this is a day I've been waiting for since a long, long time ago. Um, back in Algebra 1, we started talking about systems of equations. And specifically, we talked about systems of linear equations. And we started solving them. And what I told you back in the day is there were five ways to solve a system of linear equations in particular. The first one we learned was substitution. And you remember that it's where we rearrange one of the equations so that we can plug it into the other of the equations and then we solve it for whichever letter we set it up to solve for, x or y. Shortly after substitution, we learned elimination. And that's when you add the two equations together after you have set it up so that one or the other of the variables will cancel out, right? We multiply the whole equation um, by some contrived number and maybe the sign even too, right? So that when we squish them, we cancel out one of the variables. These are great and we've used them a whole lot. We also learned around the same time another method that is visually elegant, but far less practical. Since our equations, both are linear equations in, in these cases that we're talking about, um, of course you can solve a nonlinear system of equations, but we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about lines. What you can do is you can graph both of the lines and see where they intersect. You can look at your graph and see that point of intersection. From a mathematical point of view, that's kind of sloppy. If you're trying to calculate those exact values for x and y, that point where they intersect, um, it's mathematically vague, but visually it's beautiful because we can actually see the lines and we can observe the point where the two lines meet. So this one is limited in its usefulness, but it's quite appealing to me from a theoretical point of view. For a long time, we sat with those three methods. We didn't really do a lot with graphing, but substitution and elimination we've used to death. Now, just a few short weeks ago, if even that long ago, we learned a fourth method. We learned that you can take the abstract equations for two lines and you can solve them. You can solve formulas for x and y and we did that. I'm going to show you in just a minute again how we did that. Let me put in the fifth one and then we can do that. Remember we said if you take ax plus by and then cx plus dy, right? a, b, c, d and then you let this be equal to F, E, and this one be equal to F. I'm choosing those letters very carefully. Um, and we said if this is your system, what you can do is you can solve this for X. And what we get is this. And we did this. I'm not going to do it right now because I trust that you remember how to do it. And then we can also solve for y. And this is what we get. Uh, I'm double checking just to make sure I'm copying this right. Okay, let me just double check. I don't want, I want you to copy this down. I wanna make sure it is right. A, F minus E, okay, perfect. 
So we learned that we can do this, right? We don't need to memorize these formulas because anytime we want, we can say, oh, solve it for X, right? And we can just uh, rearrange to get to solve for X, right? I think we, uh, we multiply, we, so we choose to eliminate our Y's, right? Multiply this one by D and this one by minus B. I'm sure you remember that. It was quite recently uh, that we did that. And mathematicians long ago realized, oh yeah, we can just create formulas that save us the trouble of doing this. We can just look at the original system and plug our letters into a formula. And that was really great. And then along came a lovely gentleman. Well, there were a bunch of guys that were working on this. They were working on something called linear algebra. But there was a particular gentleman named Gabrielle Kramer. We're gonna come back to that, but let me flip. Gabrielle Kramer, and you might notice, oh, I spelled it wrong here. There's no E. C-R-A-M-E-R. -E you know what? I have the power. Heck yes. I don't usually correct my mistakes because I don't want you to think that we can push through our mistakes and keep going, right? We don't have to rip it out and start over, but that just seemed like a thing to do, right? Normally I try to model that. When I make a mistake, I acknowledge it, I scribble it out, I move on. I don't make a big fuss over uh, starting over from scratch. Heaven forbid starting the video over from scratch or editing. No, you mistakes happen. You push through. Um, Gabrielle Kramer in 1750. Let me just look and see. He was Swiss. He published the um, idea that we're going to come up with next. What he did was he looked at this pattern here of the formula that you can use for solving for X and Y. And he said, hey, wait a minute. That could be written as a matrix. And so our fifth way of solving a system of equation uses Kramer's rule, which is to take these formulas and express them in a matrix. What the actual heck? I'll show you what that means. I know right now you're like, I don't know what you're talking about, but you know what a matrix is, a two by two matrix, right? Um, which we learned how to solve, right? You multiply up and down and then you subtract down and up. That's what we're gonna do with these lovely little formulas that we've developed. So let me flip and let me Re, I'm going to recopy the formulas so that when we so we can compare them. X is D E minus B F. Okay, when we solve for X, this is the formula that we create. If you want to do this in matrix form, then we would say X equals, and let, uh, let me write it and then we'll prove it. And remember, this is all going off our system that looks like this. Notice how I write it. I write the X and Y, and then I write the other X and Y because that goes A, B, C, D. Then I put in the equal signs and do the E and the F. When I first learned this, I remember that I mistakenly thought it was A, B, C, D, E, F. No, that's not right. A, B, C, D, E, F. 
F. So what we determined was that this is the way you can write that, the value for X, if you solve this system for X. This is the formula you get. Our friend Gabrielle Kramer said, you know what? You can also work from a matrix form because look what happens if we solve this matrix, right? We would get E times D minus, I'm gonna go alphabetical, BF over AD, right? Seattle to Miami, LA to Maine, minus BC. Let me just change this one so it's alphabetical. It would be D, E. Right? And look, that's exactly what the formula is. So the matrix form, and we're gonna talk about how to memorize it because right now you look at that and go, what in the heck? That looks really hard. Okay, we're gonna look at these matrix forms and we will, I'll give you some good ideas for memorizing. Right now, I just want you to see how this matrix yields the very same formula. So these last, the fourth and the fifth methods that we're using here for solving systems of equations, they're just like siblings. They're like fraternal twins, right? They're very, very close to being the same thing. So when we use this matrix form, and then we take the step of solving the matrix, we get our formula back again. So these two are just two different ways of expressing the same idea. Let's look at the same thing for y. We've, we've proven that the matrix yields the formula for x. And now let's look at the matrix for y. And again, we're using the same system, ax plus by over cx plus dy equals e and f. So this is the matrix that we will use. Two by two matrices, we're creating fractions. And then let's take a look at what happens when we solve each of these matrices. We would multiply A times F minus C times E over A times D minus these two, I'll put them alphabetically, B, C. So we find that if we use this matrix for Y, we get this. And now I'm gonna compare it to, did I write it down? Yes, if you solve for Y, AF minus CE, AF minus CE, AD minus BC, AD minus BC. So what happens is just like with the X's, if we use, if we memorize and use this matrix, then we don't even have to try to remember these formulas. This will give us the formula in the very same way. Now, how in the heck are you supposed to remember these matrices? There are a bunch of random letters. How the heck can you remember that, right? It's no easier to remember than this, but I'm gonna show you a pattern that will make it a lot easier to memorize. All right, once again, I'm gonna write our system of equations. AX plus BY, CX plus DY equals E equals F. And as we do this, we're gonna pay close attention to the pairs of letters. All right, now I'm gonna write the matrix version of each of these. I'm gonna make them a little smaller. Okay, we're copying the very same matrix that I gave you last time. We're just putting everything together on one page so we can look at them in another way. I've already shown you that this matrix will yield the very same formula that we got when we solved the equation, the system for the different letters, right? 
So this is just another form of that formula. I'm gonna show you why this is easy to memorize. But I'm writing it down still. And let me make double sure that it's right. Okay. And now I want you to look at the patterns. First, let's look at the denominators. In the denominators, they're exactly the same, right? A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. Now let's look at these patterns and see, oh look, we take the coefficients of the X and the coefficients of the y's, and we put them here. Coefficients of x are these two, and coefficients of the y terms are these two, okay? So this denom the two denominators are super easy. A over C, B over D. A over C, B over D, A over C, B over D. You've already memorized half of these matrices, right? Okay, now let's look at the tops. These, the constants, in the equations, look, they show up first, in the X matrix and second in the Y matrix. E, F, E, F, E, F. Huh, okay. And then let's look at the, the other line in the numerator of both X values. Notice that B and D are the coefficients for y, right, b and d, b and d are right here. And then let's switch to a different color. When we're solving for y, we use the coefficients for x. Which are right here. Okay, so these matrices are pretty well organized and that makes them super easy to memorize. Remember that these are the coefficients of the X terms and the Y terms, and these are the constants. So when we build these matrices, we know that the denominator is gonna be made up of these two pairs, right? A over C, B over D, same for both of them. Then when we go to the numerators, here's what I always do first. We put the EF constants into the numerator matrix first. They go first for the X's, second for the Y's. That kind of makes sense to me because they're kind of, um, I don't know, that just makes sense to me that we fill them in first for the X's, second for the Y's. Then what goes into that missing place? The, co the coefficients for the other letter, right? For the X, we put in the Y coefficients. For the Y, we put in the X coefficients. The X coefficients go first, then the constants. The Y coefficients go second, and then we put the, co the constants first. There are a lot of patterns that will make it much easier to memorize than just thinking, oh wow, that's just a wild scramble of A, B, C, D, E, F. There's a very, very, very clear pattern to it. And again, once we get these memorized, these matrices firmly in our heads, we can recreate the formulas super easily. And I'm gonna do that one more time just so we have it all in our brains clearly. I know we're kind of talking in circles here, but all these pieces fit together in a very elegant and satisfying puzzle. All right, so we're gonna take the X matrix and we're gonna recreate the formula. In each pair, I'm gonna list them alphabetically. So remember, we're going Seattle to Miami, LA to Maine. If you live in a different country or you're not familiar with US geography, feel free to make a map of something else. Seattle to Miami, 
I'm going to do it alphabetically, minus LA to main. And then we do the same thing down here, Seattle to Miami, minus LA to Maine. There we have it. We'll check both of these in just a second, just to make sure they're right. Let's do them both. Same thing with the Ys, Seattle to Miami, minus LA to Maine, over AD minus BC. Okay, and then here are the notes written on a different page. X is DE minus BF over AD minus BC. So check, that one works. And then here's the other one, AF minus CE over AD minus BC. All right, so we can easily go back and forth between the matrices and the formulas However, we want to use that information. We can go back and forth between the two forms. The matrices are much easier to memorize because they have these strong patterns that I explained to you here. With the coefficients of the x, the coefficients of the y, and then the constants, we can recreate those patterns pretty quickly and pretty easily in the matrices. You do need to memorize this though. You don't need to memorize these formulas because if you memorize the matrices, you can recreate the formula anytime you want. And vice versa, if you feel really comfortable creating these uh, formulas, right? You can, because you can solve for X and you can solve for Y, and then you can use these to recreate the matrices if you want, or they can help you. Um, the alphabeticalness of this could screw up the matrices a little bit. So I don't recommend that approach. I don't recommend memorizing the formulas. I recommend memorizing the matrices and then working in the other direction. Okay, so now we've got this great information. Hallelujah. And we can now use these to solve systems of equations. So let's see what that looks like. Here's our first system. 74.1, there are three examples in this lesson, my favorite number. Use Kramer's rule to solve. And here, it's just a sweet little system. There's nothing scary or creepy about it. And John is nice enough to put it in its proper order for us. There's the, that's how we know it's a system. I'm just double checking my numbers. Beautiful, okay. And so we're supposed to use Kramer's rule. Kramer's rule means use the matrix method. Again, if you haven't seen the movie The Matrix, it's high time. Stop that bullet in midair. Um, I don't, I'm not a proponent for violent movies. I watch them, it's fine. They're part of life. Sometimes I'm in the mood, sometimes I'm not. Um, but the beauty of the gunfights in The Matrix is not to be missed. They're like ballets. Okay, A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, we have to keep our letters and numbers matching up. Remember, this letter equals the coefficient, right? The letters match to the coefficients and signs matter. I'm not gonna make a chart because we have enough stuff to write down, but if you wanted to, you could make a chart. All right, so we're supposed to solve it completely. So let's start with X. We're gonna recreate the matrix and then we're gonna put in the values and then we're gonna solve it, all right? So we know that the bottom is A over C, B over D. I'll write it out. The bottom is A over C, B over D. That's always the same, it's just those four. All right, now we know that E and F are going to go in the spot where the X usually goes, so it's first. And then the Y, the B and D letters that are attached to the Y, they go in the second place because Y belongs in the second place. So this would be B and D. So that's how we recreate what the matrix is supposed to be. I'm just double checking to make sure I didn't make anything crazy, right? 
So we remember this comes from the far right, and these are the Y letters, right? That helps us remember where we got these two sets of numbers in the numerator. Okay, in our matrix, now we can plug in the values. So we'll put E over 10. See, now we're just plugging in. B is two over D minus three. And then down here, it's three, four, two, minus three. Okay. Got those all filled in. Now remember that our step next is to actually do the multiplications and the subtractions. Now this can get a little crazy because we've got minus signs in our values and we have minus signs in our formulas. Oops, we better be careful. And the other thing that's crazy is that we're multiplying and adding and subtracting intermingled and it's really easy to make silly little computational mistakes when you're rattling back and forth between those. So we're gonna be careful. Seattle to Miami, minus one times minus three, minus 10 times two. I'm putting everything in buckets, okay? That will be over three times minus three, minus four, times two. Okay, and then I've promptly run out of room, so I'm gonna write x equals, now we'll do the, I've left a little room here to do calculations. This would be positive three minus 20, negative nine minus eight, okay? Three minus 20 is negative 17, minus nine minus eight is also negative 17, so x equals One. Whoa. That sure worked out cute, didn't it? Okay, let's try Y. It's right, by the way, too. Okay, let's see if we can remember our matrix for Y. And I'm not gonna look at this one, I'm gonna start over. Uh, we know that the bottom is A, B, C, D. So I'll, I'll write the formula first. A, C, B, D, right? I said A, B, C, D, wrong, A, C, B, D. All right, for the top, I put the X values into the place where they normally go. And these are the X values, so it's three and four. And then I put the values from the right side, the constants, if you will, minus one and 10. Oh. Look at that, I did half numbers and half letters. Okay, let me do it over. Um, this would be A and C and E and F, sorry. My very bad, I got so excited, I just wanted to jump ahead, didn't I? Um, A, C, E, F. Okay, now we're ready to plug things in. And I put my little headings up there just to help you remember where I got those numbers. Okay, now, the beauty of this is that we've already solved the denominator matrix. There is no reason why we have to do it over again. It's minus 17, we can just write it in. Okay, A times F, oh, I need to put the numbers in, don't I? Uh, A is three, this is C, which is four, and then here's the minus one and the 10, right? That's what I wrote in here when I went crazy. Okay, now we're ready to do this. It's three times 10 minus, minus one, times four. So that is 30 plus, because these two go together to make a plus, four. So y equals 34 over minus 17. 17 times two is 34, so y equals minus two. John, you're so nice to make these come out evenly. And so our very last step is to write the answer in the form that we've been writing the answers to our systems of equations since the beginning of time, an ordered pair. Because just like we've always done, we know that this represents the point where these two lines intersect. We could solve it by graphing and get a picture of it, 
but we're not doing that. We're just identifying the point. That's where these two lines intersect. We could use substitution or equation, or elimination rather, sorry, I can't talk. Um, we could use either of those two very old school methods and we would get the same answer. We're just learning a different way to do it. Um, let's try another. Example, did I tell you there were three of them? There are three of them. Use Kramer's rule to solve, okay. That 17 has come up again, kind of weird. Okay. Once again, these problems are so much easier to sort out if you identify your A, B, C, D, E, and F values with some little letters there. Like I said, I'm not gonna go to the trouble to make a chart. We need the whole page practically to do the problem anyway. Um, but now we're solving for X and Y. And we're gonna practice once again writing the formulas because we're trying to memorize those pups. So we remember the bottom is A over C, B over D. We put the Y values into the Y spot, minus three and minus seven. Then the constants go in the first place, right? I call this the right, because it's on the right-hand side of the equation and it's easier than writing constants. And these are the Y values. The solving for X, we put in the Y values. And then when we're solving for Y, we'll put in the X values, right? There's that kind of backwardsiness that's appealing. Okay, we know that the bottom is the same. Look what I did, I did it again, where I put the numbers in the top and the letters in the bottom. That is so weird, why am I doing that? I don't know. Um, it would be, I'm just gonna write it here so you have it in front of you. It's the E and the F go here, and the B and the D go there. I'll write it again. A, C, B, D. Okay, now this one is the same on the bottom. And as we've seen, it saves us a lot of time when we're doing the problems because we don't have to recalculate that. The X values go in the first place, that's five and two. And then the right values, oh my gosh, I did it again. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I think I'm having some sort of a mental breakdown. Alphabet soup. Okay, the X values are A and C and then E and F. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's nutty. All right, let me just double check and make sure. See, I can do the hard parts right. It's the easy things that my brain just doesn't always want to participate with. Okay. So we've already got these numbers figured out. We're gonna have to plug in on the bottom. I'll write that over here. Uh, five over two and minus three over minus seven. Okay, that is our uh, actual denominator. So let's do our multiplying now. Seattle times Miami minus LA times Maine Look at all those minus signs. There are a lot of them. We're going to have to multiply carefully. All right, and then our denominator is over here. That's a five. Five times minus seven. Minus two times minus three. So this becomes minus seven, right? That's this much. And one, two, three, minus, and what's three times 17? Well, three times 10 is 30 plus 21, so that's 51. Yes. And then down here we have minus 35 
plus 6. And so x equals, that's minus 58 over minus 29, right? These are going in the same direction, so we just add them. These are going in opposite directions, so we take the difference, we subtract the six, that gives us the 29. The two minuses cancel, 29 times two is 58, so we get a value of x equals two. That sounds about right. John's been really nice to us with these. All right, so now we're ready to do the second one. Um, I've already figured out my denominator and I know it's minus 29. So I don't even have to do this again. Um, so here's our top. It is five times minus 17 minus two times one, all right? Boom, 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 minus sign in between. This, let's see, five times 10 is 50. Five times seven is 35, so this is minus 85 minus two times one is two. So that is minus 87, y equals minus 87 over minus 29. We know the answer is gonna be positive. And what I'm guessing is that this is gonna come out to a whole number. I know it's not two, because 29 times two is 58, but I bet it's three. Three times 20 would be 60, plus 27, 87, this is three. I hope you have your own mental tricks for testing numbers like this when you're pretty sure it's gonna come out even. So once again, John has given us a happy, happy answer. I'll write it right here. Our point is two, three. That is our solution using Kramer's rule for this system of equations. We know we could solve this in those other ways as well, right? It doesn't have to be Kramer's rule, but it can be Kramer's rule. And it gives us a great example of how matrices can be super useful. Okay, one more time. And this one's kind of fun. I mean, they're all fun, right? I know. I love this, you guys. I just think it is so fun and so clever. They're just nifty little puzzles. I love trying to find interesting ways to memorize. Um, I don't love memorizing, but I love to try to find little patterns. And I think that is a fun thing about this. 3x plus 2y equals 5. Now check this out. As you copy those down, think about those equations for just a minute. That makes no sense whatsoever. 3x plus 2y equals 5. 3x plus 2y equals 8. And they're in the same system, meaning that the same values for x and the same values for y. Excuse me, I'm not bored, I'm just yawning. Um, but they give different answers. Right off the bat, we're suspicious, right? That, that doesn't seem like it makes any sense at all, but that's what we've got. So let's just dive in. We put our letters on. Remember we do A, B, C, D, and then go over and do E, E, and F. Okay, let's see if I can do this this time without losing my mind. The bottom is always the same, A, B, C, D. Um, it might help you, as I'm thinking about memorizing this, put the Y values in next into the Y position, B and D. They, we know they go over here because we just think X's and Y's, right? Y's always go second. So put those in and then put E and F in the other place. Look, I did it. All letters, I'm so proud of myself. And then let's do the Y's down here. Exactly the same on the bottom, A, B, C, D. Then we put the X letters into the X place, three and three. And then E and F go in whatever's left. <gasps> oh 
Why do I do that? Uh, this is A and C, and this is E and F. Oh my gosh. Well, I did it once. I'm really proud of myself. Ready? Three, three, two, two. <clears throat> and on the top, five, eight, and this is X, so we put the Y's. Two and two. All right, let's fill these in before I do something else wrong down here. This would be three over three, two over two. We put the X's. This is solving for Y, so we take the X letters and we put them into the X place. Three and three. And then we put these guys over on the other side. Okay, oh, whew. got through that. Ready? Now we're ready to show our multiplications. Five times two minus LA to main eight times two. All right, and then on the bottom, three times two minus Three times two, hmm, that sounds curious. Let's simplify that. Ten, I'll write it down here. X equals 10 minus 16 over six minus six, okay. It's minus six over zero. Wait just a minute. We know that's a problem, don't we? That is absolutely not gonna work. We slam the brakes on and we say, there's no solution. We know it automatically. You cannot have a zero in your denominator. So we can stop right there we know that because this denominator is zero, this is also going to be zero. There's no solution to this. And that makes a lot of sense to us because we saw up here that this doesn't make any sense. You can't take three times the same number plus two times another number and have it equal something different, right? These are the same. So their answer should always be the same. So this is the end of this problem. And anytime we have a zero in the denominator, it's the same old rule. It's the kingdom blows up. Kingdom. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, the kingdom is the old 70s cement dome sports arena that used to live in Seattle. And about 20 years ago, they decided to build new, more modern facilities. And so they imploded. They didn't blow it up. I always say blow it up. That is an exaggeration. They blew it in. Um, but they imploded the kingdom. And in my mind, that's what happens whenever we try to divide by zero. You just can't. The, the universe implodes. So if you go to my YouTube channel and you go to, I have a playlist called Mathiness. That's where I post videos of these like ridiculous things that I say. Um, there is a video there of the kingdom imploding and it is worth the watch so that whenever you see me or yourself trying to divide by zero, you just get this feeling of mass explosion and um, it'll help you remember that's not going to work. Okay, so this is how we know that there's no solution when we get a zero in the denominator. There's no unique solution. That's John's word. Okay, I'm done. Lesson 74. We now know five, count them, five ways to solve for, to solve a system of equations. And I want you to know that this whole branch of study where we look at the coefficients and make patterns with them in a system of equations, there's a whole branch of mathematics that studies this. It's called linear algebra. So you can go to college and take a whole class 
just on this game of playing around with these coefficients, which I don't know, that sounds kind of fun to me. But anyway, I just wanted to drop that in there because someday you'll be looking at a course catalog and you'll see a class called linear algebra and you'll be like, what is that? It's playing around with coefficients on systems of equations. Done, goodbye.